Okay, so I've got Visual Studio opened. I've opened the project that we worked on last month, the CBDB project. We haven't looked at it in a little while because we were focused on the um, coding of pouch. So uh, this is open. I've got a device plugged in. I'm going to run this on a device just to remind me what it looked like. But you should remember that last month we were working on that system to log in uh, to the app. And we're going to add what we did with Pouch on Tuesday. We're going to migrate it over to this project. And this reminds us about how the slowness of compiling. I think we've got i5s, so it takes a little moment. I'm going to compile this and run it on my device. While that's compiling, let me mention in general the idea. So we're going to use the, the that pouch code that we were working with on Tuesday, and we're going to migrate some of the all of the code basically into this project. In general, let me just show something here. So from my flash drive, the idea is we were working on on the pouch file from last time. This has code that we need to put into the CVDB project. The pouch project has jQuery. We don't need to copy that over. The CVDB Visual Studio project already has it. I'm going to copy the pouch file in a moment. And the code inside of the HTML file well, that some of it is HTML, but most of it is JavaScript. So we're going to need to copy the HTML code to the right place in the index.html file of the CVDB project, and then the JavaScript basically into the JavaScript file of the CVDB project. This is still thinking for me, so if you're having any trouble setting up, now is the time to ask. Uh, when mine is set up, uh, I'm going to start to show us how to migrate the code and uh, to go on. If you came in a little bit late, we are using devices. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to check out a device, I still have a few left. You trade your ID and you can use one of the devices. Yeah, that that CBDB project. I just uh, ran the ran it on the device. I selected the device so I can see it on my real device. This is when. I want to ask for the school to pay for brand new computers with i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and USB 3, because it takes a while. Inside of that, uh, the 07, 07.25, inside of it you have the SLN file.
right, so eventually that loads up. I have my splash screen loaded up for a moment. It's got the login, it's got the sign up. So what I want to do then is now I want to sign in so that I can start to use uh, the app. Since I deleted the app off of the device before, all of the names that I had used to sign in, sign in with are gone. So I need to create one more sign up. I'm going to do it so simple, v at v.com, password of v. And I just need to be able to log back into the app so that then we could start to migrate the code from Tuesday into today's project. Now it's, it's also going to be uh, fast uh, to test this in the in the emulator. So I'm going to stop my real device. I'm going to change over to the uh, simulator, the LG5, just so that you can see something. I already confirmed that it loaded up on my device. I already signed in on the welcome screen. I'm going to simulate it so that you guys can see something. Remember, this simulates it in the web browser, Chrome. So we've got the login sign up, just on that bottom right there. Um, we might get rid of that actually. I don't really, I don't think we really need any any bottom footer there. Login sign up. Well, I'm gonna sign up to create an account. V at v dot com. Password v. Go. Signing in. v.com, password v, so home screen. So I'll give you a moment. If it's not quite working, let me know. We all want to be at this point where we've got Visual Studio loaded up. We've got our code loaded, and we're going to migrate our, our code from Tuesday into the project at the moment. So any questions at this point? So as we all get to this point in, in the concept in general, we have this login and log out system. We are then going to go in and start to uh, set up our home screen very directly to have a button, save a comic or view comics. We're going to create a couple of buttons on this home screen in a moment. We're going to click the button to save a comic it'll go to another screen where it'll have those forms, those input fields, the name of the comic, the year of the comic, etc. So we're going to copy that form into a new screen for saving comics, a new data roll of page with an ID of like page save comic to save the comic. From this screen we will be able to save a comic or view our comics. So there will be a button, view our comics. That'll take us to another screen. Data role equals page, ID, PG, view comics. And that screen is going to have the part where we have the table, where we had that div 
that displayed the comics. So on the plain old pouch project from last time, everything was in one screen, very ugly looking, functional, but ugly. So now that we're going to get it back into the Visual Studio project, we'll be able to have separate screens and animation and nice buttons and all of that. So there'll be a screen to save the comic. There'll be another screen to view the comics. Uh, remember, the, the comics are only shown the, 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 the name of the comic, or the title, uh, and the, the number. Then there's a button to view more. So we need to set that up, a, a, a pop-up, to show the view more content. Once we integrate that back into the uh, Visual Studio project, then we can start to do these, this other functionality that I, that I want to do that makes it like a real kind of app, like accessing camera and all that good stuff. But we can't do that when it's a plain old web project because it doesn't have Cordova. Once we integrate the code into this, we will have Cordova to access the device. Stop debugging. So um, let's see, first thing we'll do in the WW folder, let's open the index file. And let's scroll down line 49. This is the, the welcome screen PG welcome, page welcome, got that footer. Um, I think for the moment to be consistent, we will leave that and we'll have a, a, our copyright notice. We had the copyright notice on the login screen. We'll have it on this screen as well. Line 49, so copyright at copy. So in 49, I just added a copyright notice at the bottom. It was still uh, showing a placeholder text of bottom. Further down on the home screen, starting at line 105, Line 105 is where the page PG Home starts. The name of the app, whoops, I misspelled it, DVDV, CVDV. So uh, line 105, we're on the PG Home and a, a message of H2. Home screen, let's say welcome, and a paragraph. Use the comic book database. Save comics. You can have a couple of buttons. Like I said, there's going to be a button to uh, let us save the comics and a button to show the comics. So we're going to think in terms again now about uh, having the power of jQuery Mobile. So a tag to have a button for uh, save comic. Another a tag for uh, view comics. href will go somewhere in a moment. Data role button. The other one as well, href will go somewhere, data role, button. So button to save the comics, a button to view the comics. So we'll figure out an icon for it later. We have to look up at uh, jQueryMobile.com uh, the list of icons to maybe find uh, an icon that makes sense for saving something and viewing something. Now, since we were dealing with jQuery a lot for the last several weeks, 
we were always thinking in terms of we've got buttons and we need IDs so that those buttons can do something in the JavaScript. But we don't need that right here because we're in the world of the HTML, we're in the jQuery mobile. This is just a plain old A tag linking to somewhere. It doesn't need any ID to do any special JavaScript stuff. We do need an href to point us somewhere. So let's say PG save comics, which doesn't exist yet. Doesn't exist yet. And then so PG view comics. the view comics button. So that means we'll need a screen that will focus on saving the button, a screen that focuses on the form where, it, where, we, where the user input all that information, title of the comic, um, number of the comic, year of the comic, etc. And then we'll have a screen that focuses on viewing the comics, viewing the table of comics. We left a uh, template at the end of our HTML file. We need a... Yeah. What line number? Oh, okay. Well, that's just, that's just text that the user will see, so, oh. so it doesn't matter. But uh, good point. Save, save comics, view comics. Yeah. So we need to create a brand new section to view the save comics stuff. And if we scroll to the end, we have template. So we have template page start, template page end. We want to copy that so that we can start to create that save comics section. I'm going to copy that. This is at about line 141, and uh, right above it, I'll paste one line 41. We'll say uh, save comics. Save comics page start. Save comics page end. This is the ID uh, that we just made up a moment ago, which was PG Save Comics. Header, article, I want both of those, but I don't want the footer. Let's remove the footer. For save comics screen, this footer is just going to take a valuable space. The save comics section, the save comics screen, is going to be uh, the input form. And I want to use as much space as possible for it, so let's remove that footer. We've then got only header and article. For header top, let's make that say save comics. And this template, h2, we, we won't even need that because we're going to put our whole form in there in a moment. Now when we go from the home screen to this save a comics screen, we're going to have a dead end. We need to go back. Without doing a very fancy navigation system, we can easily, in the header, add the ability to go back one screen. Remember we have 
data dash add dash back btn equals true. So line 143, we've got the header of the Save Comics page with an add back button true. So that when someone goes from the home screen to save a comic, they finish saving the comic, they can go back. We need a screen that's very similar for the for the show comics, view comics, whatever we called it. So we can actually borrow this one that we just made because it has the general skeleton of what I want to display in the, in the show comics. I'm going to copy this whole section that we just made, save comics, copy all of that and paste it so we can change it to, to view comics. So this save comics, I'm going to copy that and paste it right after itself. That's view comics. Section ID, PG view comics. We made those buttons back on the home screen. Now there is a place where they go to when you click. So PG View Comics. I want that same header, data role header, data position fix, data add back button. I still want that. H1 will make that say View Comics. I didn't want a footer. I removed it from um, the save comics, so we don't have it in the view comics, that's fine. I don't want a footer there either. I want to use as much space on screen to view the comics. Take a quick look at it in the simulator. Save your work and check the simulator, which will probably be faster than running it on the device. Should have also detected that I had logged in, so I logged in with v at v.com a moment ago. So it logged me in. I'm getting some JavaScript output over here that we did a long time ago about yeah, you're logged in, etc. So that's that should work as before. I'm logged in with what we just typed. Use the comic book database to save your comics. If I click on save comics, we should get a new screen. Save comics, nothing there yet. Mac. View comics, screen, but nothing there yet. No footer, I don't want the footer. That's what it is so far. Um, stop the simulation to go back to the code, and that's where we're at so far. Anyone, have, anyone need any help on that? So if we... Yes.
Is that the Yes. Okay, so if we can see those screens, we can start to set ourselves up to bring over what we had from Tuesday to today's project. Uh, we can actually do some drag and drop. I've got here a window, a plain old, you know, explorer window. I'm looking at my flash drive. I'm looking at my flash drive where I've got the pouch project from Tuesday. Inside of that folder, we need to move the pouch JavaScript library into the scripts folder of our project. So you can just drop, drag, and drop from your Explorer window, just drop JS file, the pouch JS file, into scripts. Not the HTML and not the jQuery. We just need the pouch JS. move pouch, copy pouch, into my scripts folder of my Visual Studio project, there it is. So in the index file of the Visual Studio project, we need to connect the index file to the pouch file. Back to Visual Studio, if we go all the way to the end, at about line 175, we've got already a connection to jQuery. A connection to jQuery mobile. Then we've got Cordova, which is dynamically created as necessary. Uh, connection over to platform overrides if we wanted to customize our project per platform. And then our index.js, which is our custom JavaScript. So new line right after jQuery, right after jQuery mobile. I'm going to start to write script. Open and close that source. And remember the cool thing here about Visual Studio is that as you're typing this source, it will, it will show you a folder tree of the project where you can just simply click uh, inside of the scripts. I've got pouch and it writes the path. So of course you can write it yourself or simply have it fill it in for you. It does. Uh, for example, if we try to use jQuery mobile, if we have jQuery mobile before jQuery, it fails because jQuery mobile expects jQuery first. So it's often best to have jQuery first because so many other projects rely on it. And that's why we've got pouch after it. Now, it wouldn't matter if pouch was first or jQuery mobile was first. In that case, it wouldn't matter. But we want jQuery first. Yes.
All right, so this activates, this, this gives us the ability to start using pouch again in our project. Now, uh, the, the uh, order, as, we, as was asked, yes, the order does matter, short answer. Uh, you want to have jQuery as your first thing, and then other things come after that. So next, we need to start to integrate the HTML code from the Tuesday code into today's project. Back on my flash drive, I'm going to open pouch HTML file in Notepad again. I guess we can open it in Visual Studio, but I kind of liked opening it in Notepad so that I know where I'm copying it from, where I'm copying it to. Sometimes if you've got two things to look at in one software, it's easy to confuse. So what I'm going to do is uh, pouch HTML file. I'm going to open it in Notepad again. And what I need to get out of this, so from about you know, our body starts, and we don't have very, very much. It's only about 35 lines. <clears throat> but what I, what I need, and we've got a lot of these comments that we may or may not want to bring in, but what we need right now is from about line 8 to 25, we need the form, the form that is being asked for, that will ask for the user to type in the name of the comic and all of that. So I'm going to copy that from the pouch file. Line 8 to line 8 to 25. And then in Visual Studio, let's see, we need that in line 147. That's where we've got the save comics. We've got the article in a section of PG Save Comics. So, so that part, the form, I've pasted it in. There's the comment if you want it. There's the form we created with its ID, its field sets, its optional and required inputs with their own IDs, all of that. We're then going to need the we're going to need the code that will display the uh, the results, right? The table that displays the results of saving the comic. If you go back to the pouch file, all of that is really only line 35. Line 35 is the one uh, that simply displays the comics, so that's really simple. We need that div, line 35, from the, from the pouch file, and that one's going to go into the PG view comics. Comics, that's where I pasted the show comics table. 
in the plain old pouch file, we had everything visible in one screen. Here's your input forms. Here's the div that shows the table of, of uh, comics. And now we're separating them with different sections. From the pouch file, we, we don't need it yet, this div here. Uh, we will need it, but we'll come back to it. This div that showed the, the info about the comics, that's going to be a pop-up. Uh, we'll get back to it in a moment. We still need that from the pouch file a little bit later. More importantly, we need all of this JavaScript code. See basically everything past use strict. We're not going to need this function, this anonymous function that sets up the immediately invoked function expression. It's already there. We don't need use script. It was already there. We're going to need from about line 43, where our first variable starts to set up the form, all the way down to where the last event handler ends, not the ending of the immediately invoked function but to the end of the div show comics table on a click. It was at 43 to 263. That's, you know, uh, 230 lines of code to make the project work up to this point. <clears throat> that will go in the Visual Studio project in the index.js file. Not the index.html. The HTML file is for the HTML code. The JS file is for the JS code. So in your scripts folder, open up index.js. This is what was already there, which is already up to 153 lines. But that had the immediately invoked function. It had to use strict. It had all of this code that we set up for our whole login system. It's kind of an empty line there I don't want. Optional. I guess I'll leave it. And um, all the way at the very end, let's see, it goes 139. We've got end on device ready. All of our code has to happen inside of on device ready. Now, we, we sort of divide it up. Here's our section for our variables. Here's our sections for our functions. Here's our section for our, our event handlers. We can continue to do that or keep the code bundled together that is of the same concept. Uh, so kind of going back, right? What I was show, what I was saying was that we've got a section where we define all our variables. We've got a section where all our functions are set up. We've got a section where our event handlers. I'm going to keep it together as a bundle because we copied it all from the one file. We know that it works. Instead of trying to separate it into different areas, it might be better just to paste it in as is. So make sure you're still inside of the on device ready, line 140 or so, and paste all of that JavaScript code from the pouch file in. You might have to tab that stuff a little bit, or I guess it came in fine. So that was 230 lines on top of the 150 of that were already there. That one's getting up to 378. So I like here in Visual Studio how it color-coded on the left that this is where my new code started, just so that I can go back to where I had plugged it in. Uh, I'm going to make a, a comment here. So all these previous lines of code of my uh, login system are, are still there. What follows is the function. This pouch DB section starts. 
and I'll put pouch TV section end at the end. I'm going to the very end on device ready ended there and right before it pouch TV section end. working on this project on Tuesday, we were saving comics and all of that, and uh, oftentimes we, we refreshed the browser to see the result. Uh, we're going to build in the functionality that as soon as uh, a new comic is added, the table refreshes itself. So the way we view the table of comics is line 332 function show comics prep. That function is the one that retrieves the content from the database, creates the table, displays it on screen. So that appears to show the comics on the screen. We have an instance of it running right away. When the app loads the first time, it's going to display. Well, I want for the table to update itself, to redraw itself. Every time I add a new comic, update the table. That function updates the table. So if we copy that, we want that to happen after a successful save of a comic. We need to go find where we save our comic. Function comics prep, save comic, OK. Uh, so basically right here, line 285. If we successfully um, saved a comic in the console, we get an output, we reset the form. Let's say after we reset the form, we can type it because Visual Studio will um, give us a list of all of our functions. Function show comics prep. Let's add this on line 287. After we save a comic, redraw the table. We had to manually refresh it in the browser. We're not in the browser anymore. So we want this to redraw itself upon saving the, the comic. I think at this point, it's not quite there yet, but I think at this point we can look at it in the simulator save everything, we'll look at it in the simulator. We should start to see a semblance of it. We should start to see those input fields. It should, I believe, save the comic, and you should be able to see the comics in the table. Okay, so it logs me in automatically. I'm going to save comics. Spider-Man number one, 1963. Click save. You can also press enter. In the output, it says succeeded true, but we're going to program it so that it gives feedback to the user. Comic was saved. Right now, the user would get no feedback. We get feedback in our console, but no user is ever going to look at that. It said I it saved, and we've added one item to the database. That was the function comics prep. So we're going to make a pop up in a moment. To confirm that this worked, I can go back to the top and click back, and then view comics. Got my table first comic is there. We're going to need to play with the styling, coloring, and all of that. And now I have something in the table. I can go back, add another comic just to practice. I'll 
save that, I get no feedback. If I try to save without filling anything in, I should get a pop-up, thankfully for that required attribute. Go back to view comic, I have a new item. This button here, these don't work yet. Wants to work, but it's not set up yet because we have no pop-up box. We made the year required, so if you try to save without the year, it will require it. And I go back and I view that. So here's where it is so far. It's still missing stuff, of course. We still need to copy stuff over. And we need to add extra functionality that wasn't there in the original Pouch project, but it's coming along. Um, that's why I wanted to focus on working on Pouch by itself in Notepad before bringing it into Visual Studio, because we have now big software to work with, with overhead and such. And pause right there. Anyone need some help to get it to this point?
Now the uh, form input and then the table output of the project is integrated into the Visual Studio project. We've got the save stuff and the view stuff. We'll do one thing, then we'll take a break. This table here uh, doesn't look that nice. This table, based on what is inside of it, it grows or shrinks. If you've got comics in there with a short name, the table is not that wide. But as you add comics with a longer name, it gets wider. Instead of it deciding when to do that, let's write some CSS to control that table and then to also make it look nice and all of that. So I'm going to stop my simulator, go back to Visual Studio, and now we're going to look at a file we haven't really worked with before, the index CSS file. So in your CSS folder, let's open the index CSS file. There isn't very much in there. What we worked with previously, that's basically out of the template when we set this up last month. And we removed a lot of superfluous stuff that we didn't really need. So to get us started here, we need to write some CSS that targets that, that element. Thinking about it like this, now uh, just like with uh, Notepad++, we can see two files at once. So I'm going to right-click my index.html file so that you can get a new vertical tab group just to see it side by side if you want. If you want to put it back, you can right-click it and move to previous tab group. Let's move the index.html file to a vertical tab group because the idea is we're going to write some CSS to affect something in the HTML and later in the JavaScript. Line uh, 174 is where we've got the is where we've got the the div that displays the table which has an ID. We gave it an ID a while ago for the JavaScript so that we can populate it but also CSS can use that ID to target it. So in the CSS we're gonna write the name of that div that ID, that is. So it starts with a pound sign. Div show comics table. Space table. And curly braces. So first we said, go find some element with that ID, which is the whole div. Well, via the JavaScript, we eventually create a table we put the table in that div. So here we're being more specific. Let's target a table that exists in that div. Yes? Exactly. <clears throat> yes. Often that's that's the way we do it. This element is in this element, so there's a space in between. So the table is inside of that div, that's what we're targeting. And if I wanted to further, like, let's say, uh, th, well, that's saying any table heading inside of this table, inside of this div. There is, um, in, the, in the sense, in the case of table headers, there's only one row that should have table headers, but all of the table headers, all the THs in that row should inherit whatever we define here. So we don't have to define every single one of our THs. All THs will inherit what we define here. They inherit it. So you know, if we do th by itself over here, it one of the easiest ways to know about that is just simply the order of it. If we first set up a th here, all our ths will be red, so everyone will be red. They will inherit red. But then here we say, okay, now let's target ths in this particular table in this div, so only that one will change. 
So it's just the basically the order that it, it's all that it's all in. That's when the inheritance, the cascade happens. So what we want to do with this table is uh, a few things. We uh, first of all we want to set a background color. There's no background color at the moment. These will be you can play with these uh, on your own depending on the style that you have. But I want to use one called white smoke, which is like an off white. There's also ghost white. That's interesting. It's kind of blueish, purplish. Or white smoke, which I would just call it gray, but it's just another shade of gray. So we'll do a background color for that uh, for the starting point of the table. And here's the big one. Width of 100%. No matter what's in the table, I want the table to stretch out to uh, take up the screen. It looks unprofessional that when it's a little name, the table is small, and when there's a bigger name, then it's big. Just always make it 100% the width of the screen so that it takes up the whole screen. Margin will say auto so that it is also automatically centered to the center of the screen. <clears throat> Off the top of my head, I forget what table layout does, but since I wrote it, it's probably important. So we'll write it too. Then I've got another one here where word wrap. Um, if we don't specify this, something weird could happen. If there's a long name, that name could jump out of its cell and cover something else. So we want to activate word wrap. And word wrap usually happens if you have, for example, the amazing Spider-Man. The photosynthesis. The that's funny. It's not gonna like okay, A, B, C, D, whatever. Words. Whenever there's a separation of a word that's going to be able to do a word wrap. Well, sometimes you have a word or you have a name of something that's really long, and it will not word wrap it because it doesn't find an empty space. We have a way to force word wrap even if it's a long name. If we say uh, word dash wrap break word based on the size of the table and the cells and all of that stuff break the word. So if you've got a really long name of a title, it will break it at some point, which is better than its name jumping out of the cell and covering the adjacent cell. Text-shadow because of jQuery mobile there's a basic drop shadow that's being added to many of the items in a table. I want to nullify that or cancel it, so I'm saying text shadow none. Basically, table layout fixed and word wrap together set up a way to uh, do some good word wrap if your names are too long. Yes. Do we what? I forget the exact I forget I forget the exact usage of this, but now that you mention it, I think it does have to do with that it will properly space out the cells. I have to double check what that one is. I always forget what that one is exactly. But uh, we should have the table layout plus a width um, so that we know that it takes up the amount of space on the screen and that it properly shows the content of each cell. Let's check this system. I'm going to, well, I'm going to check it first in the simulator, then I'll check it in my device, and then we'll take a break. But I just want to confirm that the, um, that little bit of CSS is going to make my table look a little nicer. We're going to add a little more CSS right after the break. Just to show you here, once it signs me in, <coughs> view comics. Here's the table, it looks terrible, but we're going to fix that in a moment. The point of it is that it is stretching out to, uh, 
to fill to fill the screen and I that does remind me then text or table width table table layout width or fixed I believe then it is about putting an automatic amount of equally spacing each column so I'll remove it in a moment to check let's see how each one of these is perfectly 200 pixels or whatever I obviously don't need 200 pixels for here and here would be better there so we might not need that that one but definitely a width we can do this uh, it's still running in the simulator and sometimes it's helpful to do this I'm, it's, I'm gonna leave it running in the simulator I'm gonna comment out or just delete that table layout for the moment save it and then up here we've got a refresh or restart this will come this seems to compile it a little bit faster than a complete compilation so sometimes it's useful to leave the simulator running, make your changes, save, and restart. Let me see if that gave a better result for the for the table. Okay, yeah, so we don't want that line actually. Sometimes we want the equal columns, not this time. I want this to take up as much space as it can for the names. I don't need any space at all really for here or here. Although just to test this again, I can put the, the number of a comic that's very high up. So we'll fix the colors in a moment. But let's say I want to save comic. Uh, here's one I have, Captain America number 444, like 1996 or something. Save that. If you go back and view, so in this case, it's still going to grow, which is good. The 444 comic does take up a little bit more space. It's going to work better. And I'll stop the simulator at this point. So it looks like we don't really need that text, the table layout width. You can, you can comment it to give yourself a note there. It creates equal columns. We don't want it in this case. And save that. So at 7.25, we'll take a break until 7.35. If it's not quite working, we'll go on, or we'll help, and we'll go on in a moment. Be with you one moment. Never worked with about today. Okay. This was set up a while ago, and that's fine. That it has bound signs to nowhere because we run JavaScript. Do those have IDs? So we run JavaScript to access those buttons. The buttons on the welcome screen are playing with those buttons to go from one section to another. So we have bound signs.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Just one moment. I'm about to pass that out in a moment. The sign in sheet and let's come back to back to our code. So after this we put right here. Pass out the sign in sheet with the with the pen and then you can uh, sign in, please. <coughs> 